That evening, the team went looking for the giant leatherback again. But on the way, they noticed micro tracks. It looks like you have little foot Come on, let's see. Yeah, look at his oral. It's very evans. It's very evans. Dat lijkt toch weer spoorkrappen was. Zo kom eens kijken. Je kan ook al zo'n spoorkjes zien. Weer eens zeggen. Ah! They've just missed the hatchlings. Je kunt zien wel, hier allemaal uitgeklimmerd. En dat goed voor je af gaan. As they start digging to see what remains in the nest, they notice a casualty nearby. Ja, heel lijkt mij naar de inkchamber. It's not just any casualty. It's a tiny leatherback. En hoe dik wel zien de mens? Um, leren is waar waar is de eerste keer dat ik het zie. Dat is de eerste keer, ja. Um, Karet is algemeen, want dat is heel wat kleiner. And while the ghost crab closely guards its prize, they continue digging. Ik heb weer een voel, dus hoeveel warmer het is. Ja, ja, baie warm. Ah! Een lerig skulpaai. Een lerig skulpaai. Hij lijkt niet baie sterk nie, en dat is heel waarschijnlijk hoe kom hij in die nes achtergebleid het. Okay. Um, Juist moet hulle gesynchroniseerd saam uitkom. Ja. So hy lijkt niet kleiner. Um, hij is misschien gelee dreer op onderrond bukkel. Ja. The little one had a stiflingly long distance that he had to dig to get through the sand from the bottom to the top of the nest. Dat zou een hele paar dagen vatten het om daar 80 centimeter uit te graven. Ja, rechtig. Ja, dat gebeurt niet onmiddellijk niet. En dat is immer die reden dat ik mijn zand zo warm is. Ik was bij activiteit, bij aasomhaling, bij een bewegen. This little one doesn't look like it stands much of a chance. Maar dat kan elke keer ons nog verras. Dat is nog iets. Is een eierdop van het gewei. In the meantime. Our little weakling starts to do stretching exercises under Bertus's arm. And there's another surprise. A few steps away, a nest full of baby loggerheads starts to hatch. up, they dress warmly and drive south. And then, their largest track yet, and one of the few leatherbacks nesting on our beaches. Their timing is perfect. She's busy digging her egg chamber. The process is very similar to that of the loggerheads. She excavates a hole in the same way, just much deeper. That is what made researchers think that the temperature inside the leatherback nests may be cooler than in the shallower loggerhead nests. A cooler nest would mean more males developing and therefore less females returning to lay eggs. But so far research has shown that both loggerhead and leatherback turtles produce almost the same percentage of females. This still doesn't explain why there are so many less leatherbacks than loggerheads. This leatherback is covered with barnacles. She also has gooseneck barnacles that only occur in the deep ocean far away from the coast. While she's covering the nest, Bertus looks into her eyes and wishes she could tell him what happens to her thousands of relatives that never return to the beach. I can see another thing, the carrots go by while we're working. Is it a living of hell? So it's hot, hot, hot. Het voelt zo rabben. Ja. Maar mijn favoriete gedeelte is... Auw! 
Dat is een pak slager. Ja. Wat ze bezig zijn om te doen is om die nest toe te maken. Okay. Zodat so, is om al die um, roofdieren te vinden. Ik weet, ik kan niet zien waar die ja, ja, nest is. Ja. Okay. Maar je moet ook maar een paar flippers. Okay. Menigte wetenschappelijk het al voor je gevlieg. She finishes her work for the evening and is definitely not going to hang around for them to finish theirs. Weite is 1.071. Oké. Ik heb weer komel. Ja. Als hij haar voeten zo beweegt, kan je mij daar. Ja, alsjeblieft. MZ, zo ik zei kom van Mozambique. 1822. 1821. Okay. Whilst loggerheads mostly stay close to the coast, leatherbacks are absolute world travelers and cross the deepest oceans. So here can people get a perspective of net how great is this leerrug scope. It um, was 1,5 meter long, but not the greatest is not. But as I go in her spore, so far as I my arms uitstrek, her flippers strek nog further as this. Their teardrop-shaped bodies are specially designed to propel them through the water as quick as a flash, even faster than a black mamba can move. But on land, with adults weighing between 250 and 700 kilograms, they struggle to drag their massive bodies through the thick sand. What then have the researchers concluded after collecting all of this data? Why have leatherback numbers failed to increase for over 35 years? We've seen that the nesting beaches are, are really the, one of the greatest incubators that we have. So if it's not on the beach, then we have to look offshore. And that's why we have a very good collaboration with Oceans and Coasts and Ears and Velo in a satellite tagging program where we put transmitters on the animals that use the satellites in the sky that can then tell us where they're going offshore. Linda explains that the satellite data shows that while loggerheads remain close to the shore, leatherbacks travel very far into the deep ocean where they cross paths with hooks and nets from fishing vessels. So what is possible is that it's capture in fisheries. That's another reason why the leatherbacks are not recovering as well as the loggerheads, particularly industries such as the longline fishing industry. So that's one of the things that we're currently looking at and investigating. But there's a second possibility now emerging from the satellite data. Loggerheads faithfully lay their eggs inside the area that has been monitored for years. But for leatherbacks, it's a completely different story. Sometimes up to 70% of the nests can be outside of the monitoring area. Wow. So it's possible that the leatherback recovery story is actually a lot better than what we're perceiving it to be. Would it be nice? Yes, absolutely. So the possibility is that the that population will be better, but we don't see it yet, or we don't see it yet. The strand here by Isimangeliso is one of the most ideal environments in the world for caretia scopaya and leerigse scopaya to nest. It's one of the biggest success for all, but the bewaring of the nest and the little ones betreft. And in spite of that, Ter duizende spookkrappen en ander gulstige roofdieren het hierdie oukies uiteindelik weer een rechtvaardige kans om te oorleef. But when they leave our protected beaches, they venture into the unknown depths, where it seems leatherbacks may once again become the victims of unsustainable human practices. On his last morning on the beach, Bertus discovers a few late risers risking the perilous path down to the water. A few of them are already covered by red ants. There are all kinds of obstacles. And the incessant ghost crabs they have to evade. The KwaZulu Natal sun bakes the sand until it's as hot as a stove plate. And a hatchling on its way to the ocean can lose up to 20% of its body weight due to dehydration. 
but the relief of the cool sea water awaits. They paddle furiously to get through the surf. But in calmer waters, they conserve their energy by folding their front flippers, almost like someone leisurely enjoying their surroundings, hands behind their back. This is how they drift into the ocean, riding on the currents. The team released the leatherback hatchling they dug out the previous evening, and Bertas joins it on the first leg of its journey. It is incredible to see how this little one is immediately at home in the water. And ironic that after all humans are doing to protect hatchlings during their perilous journey to the sea, it is humans that pose the greatest threat once they have reached their big blue home. But just maybe, in about 15 years, this one will be the one in a thousand that will return to this beach.